What up YouTube? What up musicians? What's up artists? What's up producers, engineers, film cats? Uh, it's Dima here, and boy do I have a treat for you. I have here my new Z77 um, motherboard with 3770K processor, Ivy Bridge processor that I have overclocked to 4.6 gigahertz. This is the latest build that I've been doing for people and it is stellar. So the treat today is I am going to max it out. I am going to run 2000 plugins simultaneously on this computer with no um, outboard DSP, you know, no UAD cards, S strictly on the CPU I'm going to run 2000 plugins um, including, I believe I threw a reverb in there, a channel strip, compressors, limiters, um, eight different plugins on each channel, 250 channels, mono uh, audio tracks. So, that's what we're going to do today. Before we do that, though, I want to give you guys a tour of the inside of this thing. So, check it out. First things first, guys, we have the Z77X. UP5TH motherboard by Gigabyte. Amazing motherboard. One of my favorite motherboards I've ever tweaked and overclocked and just done anything with. Um, I absolutely love it. And it's very compatible with what we're doing, which I'll explain in a little bit. Um, we have on it a 3770K Ivy Bridge processor. You need to use the Ivy Bridge processor to have access to this PCIe slot because the Ivy Bridge architecture has. Um, more PCIe lanes. Um, we have a Zotac GT640 video card, fanless. We have three hard drives of Mushkin 120 gigabyte SSD. Uh, it's a Kronos Deluxe. We have a Western Digital Blue um, one terabyte for backup and storage, and we have a um, three terabyte Seagate Barracuda. Um, which is partitioned into two 1.5 terabyte um, partitions, one for projects, one for library. We've got a DVD player, obviously. We have this thing outfitted with a Corsair H80i. It's the new uh, version of the Corsair H80 all-in-one closed loop liquid cooler. Um, it works uh, great. It's a bit quieter than the H80, I've noticed. Um, we've outfitted the whole case with Cougar Vortex fans, which are supreme, and they're just incredibly quiet. I'll give you guys a demonstration in a bit. And uh, lastly, we have the power supply, which is a Seasonic. Um, I don't remember the model number, but it's the only passive one they have. That uh, it's the fan. Basically, when the heat gets to a certain point, turns on by itself, which is awesome. And I've never even seen the fan run. Fan is always off because we have such a well ventilated system. So, you might be wondering, there's only three hard drive trays, what the heck am I going to do with that? What if I got, you know, separate project and library drives? Or what if I have extra backup drives? Or what if I have Windows on here and Linux and all, you know, more drives, basically. Well, it comes with this tray um, that works great. The tray, you just slide in here. And you have yourself five more bays. Also, on the back... If we remove the back panel, there's a place for two SSDs. Um, I opted to put the SSD here because we didn't need to use that area. And if you know we ever want to upgrade or add drives, we can always slap this in. Um, that's pretty much that for the Gutty Works. I will say this case, the Fractal uh, Define R4 case, is awesome. Um, I usually use the XL, and I took off the side panel of my computer. This is the side panel of the XL pretty much takes up the entire computer plus it's this much higher and it's about this much longer it looks like and then there's still the area here you know so you can, as you can see the case is I mean the 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 XL is really XL um, these cases also have insulation on the front the sides the top and they are great. Uh, you guys will hear, or hopefully you won't hear, um, how incredibly quiet this thing is. Um, so, let's boot her up. Alright guys, we're back. I want to demonstrate to you the noise. 
of this rig. So here we have the tower. It's got this door padding. Two USB 3, two USB 2 ports. Um, reset power. Let's check it out. Let's close this. That's the CD spinning, and I'm going to stop Chimera. And I will demonstrate to you the speed at which OSX loads. Yeah. It's like that. Mushkin Kronos Deluxe is pretty awesome. So, I'm going to take my eye lock. Gonna plug it in. I'm gonna show you guys one more thing actually. I'm gonna open up Geekbench. I'm gonna run a 64 bit Geekbench. Show you guys what this thing is capable of. You see that? 17K. What is 17,000 on a Geekbench score? That's about the equivalent of a Mac Pro 8 core. Um, so it's fast. It's balls to the walls fast. Why is it so fast? Why is this quad core as fast as an old Xeon 8 core? Well, if I open up hardware monitor, I will show you guys. We are running right now. Let's run the benchmark again. I'll show you guys. We are running right now at 4.6 gigahertz. Focus, damn you. 4.6 gigahertz. Our temperatures right now, even at full 100% load, are 60. I did a stress test for about 8 hours. It never went beyond 70 degrees, which is perfectly acceptable for these Ivy Bridge processors. I'm running the benchmark again. I was doing some things so it might be a slightly lower score this time. No, it's even better. 17.3. It is fast. Super fast. Got Intel 3770K quad core. 32 gigs of pretty fast RAM. We have our Mushkin Kronos Deluxe. Storage and project are both um, one three terabyte drive. So divide that in half, 1.5 terabytes a piece. I'm sorry, project and library. And storage is a one terabyte drive. And I moved the user folder there so that downloads and documents go on the storage drive and not on the SSD. Now hold tight, I'm going to set up the tests and we're going to run it real quick. All right, guys, I got my Pro Tools 10 session test session loaded up. What I have is one guitar track that I have duplicated 249 times. As you can see down here, there are dupe 36, dupe 37. Scroll all the way down, 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 down. And we have dupe 250 and a master. Um, I turn them all down to like minus 40 or 50 dB so that they don't kill my stereo bus. And right now we're listening through headphones because I didn't feel like setting up my interface and my monitors and all that because it's not really the idea of the test anyways. So right now we are using 3% of our CPU usage because a little bit of it is used for clip gain I think. The rest is used for these eight plugins. What do I have on this chain? Not really a typical chain, but it's irrelevant anyways. I'm just doing it to test. But uh, I have a BF76, comes with Pro Tools, 7-band EQ, a de -esser, 
the new Pro Tools 10 channel strip, multi tap delay, a D verb, another 76, and a maxim. Um, I mean, it's possible that you might do something like this at some point. But, anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of these plugins on every single channel. So I'm holding the option key and I'm reapplying this. So as you can see, every it's activating the insert on every single channel. List. Yes, all the way down to dupe. 250 just like we have here. And let's press play and let's see if we get a CPU overload. No, we don't. We get 88% CPU usage, as you can see in the bottom right corner. Uh, but we don't get a CPU overload error. If I was to duplicate maybe these last 10 tracks, let's see what happens if we do that. Then it might freak out on us. I don't know if it wants to do 2,080 instances of the plugins. Let's see. I'll duplicate it once. Okay, so now we have. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, uh, we don't have enough voices. Shit. Hmm. Well, I guess that that's that. We don't have enough voices. Well, it's doing five more. All right. So, so six more actually. <coughs> oh, there we got it. We got the CPU overload. That's because I was scrolling up and down. Maybe. Yeah. Can't really hang. But with two thousand plugins. This machine can hang. Like it, it can do it. It did it. Um, we saw it do it. Let's disable these last ten again. Hide and make inactive. Free up some CPU and voices, and we're fine. We're good to go. We're scrolling around. We can open this deesser. We can open this deverb. No CPU overloads. Pretty amazing. Now let's check our CPU temperatures. About 58 degrees. We're at like 100% load almost. 88% load. 4.6 gigahertz. It is crazy. Crazy stuff. Crazy. Um, now some of you may be asking, why not just buy a Mac Pro? Well, a Mac Pro will not have Thunderbolt. I keep forgetting to mention that it's pretty important. This computer has Thunderbolt. It has two Thunderbolt ports and they work. They're not hot swappable, but you can plug in your Apollo, for example, or your Thunderbolt hard drives or whatever your Thunderbolt devices are, and you can uh, um, use them. You just can't hot swap them, meaning you can't unplug them while they're plugged in. Um, but they work. Um, so this machine has Thunderbolt, this machine has more RAM, this machine I could put 8 hard drives in it without having to buy an additional SATA card. Um, this machine boots faster, has SSDs, this machine is quieter, this machine has more swappable parts, I could replace the CPU here when the new one comes out, when the 3790 comes out for example in a year or something, when a 6 core version comes out, I could you know, rather than having to upgrade my entire computer, I could do that, you know. It also has, um, I believe, well, let's look at a picture of the motherboard. Let's close this session because, oh, we can't do that because we're not on the internet right now. It has Wi-Fi. Um, this particular model does not. Uh, the client didn't want it. But I can add Wi-Fi. It has LAN, though. Um, it has, like, six um, PCIe slots. One PCI slot, you could put in HD cards, you could put in magma chassis, you could do all that. Um, it's, it's just as versatile as a Mac Pro, and it's about a third of the price of what you would pay for the equivalent. So, there's a good reason.
um, the cost effectiveness, the upgradability, um, the fact that you know you could run Windows on this. You can run Boot Camp on a Mac as well, but you know this is designed for Windows essentially. But I mean, it's 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 a beast. It's it's a monster. Um, it's it's fast, and it's I've you know for all of the people I've built these for, I have yet to have somebody say, "Oh man, this isn't enough for me." And I've built it for some dudes that do some serious stuff, like some serious film scoring for feature-length films, you know, that end up in, in theaters. So, um, you know, as, as demanding as our um, work is in terms of, of technology, like, you kind of always have to be on the edge. You always have to have that new thing to, uh, you know, to really compete, I think. So... Being able to run four or five instances of Omnisphere while running, you know, five instances of Massive, you know, while doing all sorts of crazy automation, you know, a PowerPC can't do that. A quad-core Mac Pro can do it to, a, to an extent. Your laptop might be able to do it, you know, your i7 MacBook Pro, I have one of those, they're awesome. But it's, I mean, it's one-third of what this is. So, essentially, um... You know, uh, the, the the computer is the staple. It, it's the it's the brain of your studio, and it's not somewhere you want to skimp. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this build, if you guys have any questions about maybe acquiring something like this, um, send me a message. Um, I'll be sure to respond. And um, I hope you guys have a very happy holidays. Thank you.